Nine things that the sun does to your skin that mom didn't teach you about, or your dad didn't teach you about, your teachers, maybe even your esthetician or your dermatologist didn't talk about these. We know that the sun can cause a ton of damage from fine lines to wrinkles and pigmentation, but do you know how that actually works? And have you ever heard of actinic keratosis or rhinophyma? Because there are things that with years and years of sun exposure, especially with other conditions like rosacea left untreated, they can develop into other things. Now, the good news is that even if your mama didn't teach you this, I, your acne big sis medical esthetician Cass Cass am, and I'm here to break down nine of the things that the sun can cause, and also what you can do to take care of it or to prevent it. And we are working with agency on a portion of this video, which I am so freaking excited about because they actually have doctors and dermatologists who literally diagnose and treat these skin conditions. It is so important to get a diagnosis because as we're going to speak about actinic keratoses, these can look just like little sandpaper or like cat litter on your face, but they can actually turn into forms of skin cancer. So make sure that you are seeing a provider, whether it is on telehealth or in person, and make sure that your skincare routine is taking care of you every day to help prevent against some of these things from happening or treat them if they've already started to pop up. And I've got a way to do that for $5, which we're gonna talk about later, but first, let's talk about solar elastosis. What is it and why does it happen to people later on in life? Well, solar elastosis literally comes from the word solar or sun and elastosis. Think of the elastin in your skin. This is a skin condition that basically looks like leathery, thickened, patches that can even be kind of yellow on the skin or specifically on the back of the neck or even the arms and hands and basically areas that have been exposed to the sun for years on end. This usually happens to people once they hit their 40s, 50s and onwards, but it can happen to people who are younger and there are ways to help deal with it as well as prevent it. But the whole thing about solar elastosis that is so interesting is that when the sun hits the skin, it damages collagen and elastin, right? Well, in solar elastosis, the skin is actually overcompensating. Your body is saying, oh, shit, these UV rays are coming to attack us, we've got to create more of the elastic stuff. And so your skin actually creates more of the strong and stretchy stuff, but it overdoes it. And that ends up leaving the skin kind of feeling leathery, kind of thickened, and it can have this yellow or brownish appearance. Sometimes, especially when it's on the back of the neck or areas in the skin that have folds, it almost looks like someone put like a fishnet stocking on their cheek or the nape of the neck or even their shoulders. Now with solar elastosis, you want to get that diagnosed and treated by a derm, but guess what can help? Sunscreen to prevent. You can also use hats and stay in the shade. And to actually treat, you need to see a doctor or a professional. Some doctors or dermatologists actually inject Botox into solar elastosis. There are also laser treatments that can help. Even IPL, intense pulse light, like what I'm currently shooting into just one of my armpits, that same light technology can be used on solar elastosis to help take care of it. And yes, don't forget about retinoids. Now here's the thing, if you're struggling with solar elastosis and you want something over the counter, you can get an over the counter retinoid, those can be helpful, but the prescription stuff is really where it's at, specifically tretinoin. That is probably going to be best for solar elastosis, especially because it is this thickened skin in general. And again, this isn't true for everyone, but in general, the skin is a little bit more tolerant when it is thicker. So getting yourself some all trans retinoic acid is one of the best things that you can put on your skin if you're not going in for lasers or Botox or things like that. Now, again, remember, you have to get this prescribed by a doctor or derm, and you need to make sure that you get this diagnosed by a derm. But there are ways like agency that allow you to do that. This is my personal future formula, and it does have tretinoin in it. This also has other ingredients from my personal skin such as dexpanthenol and tranexamic acid, which are also really good for the pigmentation that the sun can leave behind, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But my entire prescription comes with multiple products for under $30. If you want a prescription strength retinoid without actually having to go in to see a doctor and you wanna see one online, this is what I would recommend. The big thing with solar elastosis is again, get it diagnosed professionally, but remember that this is something that normally happens to people later on in life, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. So the best thing that you can do right now is make sure that you are taking care of your skin and protecting it. Any sunscreen will work as long as it's one that works for you. I personally love the Biosance for a mineral formula. This is the Squalene and Zinc, it's flashback free. And then I love this one from Black Girl Sunscreen. This is an SPF 30 as well, but this is a chemical slash organic blend. And this is in limited edition Little Mermaid packaging. Both of these give you kind of a dewy glow, but again, this is chemical slash organic and this one is mineral slash physical. Now the sun can also cause sun spots. Have you ever heard of liver spots or age spots? These are all the exact same thing, but the medical term for one of these spots is a solar lentico or solar latigenes. These are basically sunspots. And the good news is that they're not dangerous. They usually don't turn into cancer, but if you have a lot of them, they can be indicative of, hey, this skin has seen some sun and there might be other areas, moles or growths on the body that do need to get checked out. Solar lentigos aren't something to be concerned about, but a lot of people don't like the way they look. And they normally appear in the places that the sun hits. Again, the face, the neck, the chest, and yes, the back of the hands. And while age spots or liver spots are thought to happen to people who are older, they can actually happen on young skin as well, especially if that skin has been sun exposed. And 
Fun fact, freckles are actually indicative of sun exposure. Freckles are adorable, they're wonderful, all of our skin conditions are, and we don't need to judge ourselves for them, but the darker your freckles get, the more you've been in the sun, so just keep that in mind. The best way to deal with sunspots is to protect them or to help treat them, and there are some options. If you wanna prevent those sunspots from happening, prevent excessive sun exposure. This means protecting yourself with a good sunscreen. This also means hats and staying in the shade. Or look for ingredients that help balance the color of the skin. These are two different sunscreens, one chemical, one mineral, both that actually have vitamin C in them. So this helps to even out the skin tone and brighten it while at the same time protecting from the sun. I love this one from Ula Henriksen. It's mineral. It kind of gives you a luminous glow. And I love this one from Supergoop. This is a body sunscreen that goes on completely sheer with vitamin C, but you could dab this on the face if you're okay with it looking a little bit oily and dewy. This is great for dry skin. I'd say this is better for combination or even oily. AKA me. Now, if you're already noticing sunspots, again, specifically on the cheeks, on the chest, on the back of the hands, etc., use prescription strength hydroquinone or retinoids. You Use vitamin C, use tranexamic acid over the counter. The dark spot formula is what I've personally been using on some areas that I've noticed a little bit of damage or that I literally have either bug bites or breakouts appearing on my arm, which is not fun and a topic for another day. And my formula specifically has hydroquinone, kojic acid, azelaic acid, and resveratrol. So this one is custom blended to me, but any of these active ingredients can help with dark spots and pigmentation, specifically like sunspots. And if you look for any of these main ingredients, we've actually done an entire video on dark spots and how to get rid of them. These are the things you want to look for when you turn and learn those ingredients. Now, if you are okay going prescription, again, prescription strength retinoids and hydroquinone, absolutely fantastic, medically proven to work. And if you can get them for $5 or even $30, sometimes they can be less than those really expensive but fancy serums that are 40, 50, or 60 bucks. Remember that sunspots, while they're not bad or dangerous, some people don't like them and prevention is easier than treatment. But if you want to, you can do both. Now, we've already spoken about this, but you know that the sun causes pigmentation to worsen. That could be melasma, it could be pregnancy masks, or it could just be areas of the skin that are uneven. When it comes to pigmentation, the sun absolutely makes it worse. Whether it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, melasma, anything in between, sun prevention is the most important. Now, which sun protection is best? The one that you're going to use. A lot of people who struggle with pigmentation issues may be a four, five, or six on the Fitzpatrick scale. And for some people, they even feel that they are sensitive to blue light. The science shows that having our faces in front of our screens all day probably isn't doing the most damage Damage. Obviously, the sun is much worse, but if you're looking to prevent against blue light damage from any potential screen use and from the sun, it's a great idea to get a broad spectrum sunscreen and a mineral sunscreen because mineral filters have been shown to filter out those blue light wavelengths, unlike some chemical filters. This is one that I love. It's also $12. This is from Good Molecules. It's the Sheer Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. And this is one of the only mineral sunscreens that is completely sheer on all skin tones. This is amazing. And even Good Molecules as a brand, number one, they keep their prices cheap. Number Number two, they disclose all of their active ingredients to help people understand their skin. And number three, the images on their website and the way they show their products actually shows people with acne, with different skin tones, with textures, etc. And that's what I want to see. Let's have some skin condition representation out here, please. This is awesome for prevention, but some of the best ingredients you can use to actually treat pigmentation, whether it's melasma or hyperpigmentation or PIH once it has happened, are again, this quick list. We've actually done an entire video on this. I have some of these in my personal dark spot formula, but my skin is going to be different from yours. And if you feel like you've tried everything, literally go down the list, turn and learn your ingredients, see if you have that ingredient in one of your formulas or in one of your skincare products. And if you haven't tried one of these, Take them to your esthetician, to your doctor, to your derm, and find a product that contains them because that's where you're going to want to start. Because if you're looking for something that is evidence and science backed, this list is where you wanna start. You can screenshot this, text it to yourself, text it to a friend, save it for later. This is your guide for hyperpigmentation and uneven skin tone. I personally struggled with acne for so many years of my life. And even though the acne was on my face, nobody, and I mean nobody, not even my doctor or dermatologist told me about the scars that it would leave behind. And nobody, including my dearly beloved mother goose, or my dermatologist or the estheticians that I would see, no one told me that the sun could actually make my acne scars worse. Yes, acne scars, scars from slipping down some wet stairs while looking on your phone and smashing your elbow. Yeah, if you've got acne blemishes, a mark, anything, the sun can actually make scarring worse. And there are different ways that that happens, but essentially we know that the sun damages our cells, literally damages DNA, and that can damage the way our skin cells regrow and regenerate. Sun exposure can actually thicken scar tissue. And for anybody who struggled with keloids, you might be all too familiar. If that keloid got in the sun, especially when it was healing, it might be hypertrophic on the skin. Hyper meaning extra or more, and trophic, think of topography, right? That can actually happen to scars on the skin. In addition, the sun 
some can cause pigmentation, which we just spoke about, and that can change the color of scars or it can change the color of the skin around the scar, causing it to be even more visible. The best thing you can do for scars is treating them immediately after a wound happens. And yes, that does mean sunscreen, but that also means things that are wound healing. We're talking about ceramides, we're talking about vitamin C, we're talking about hyaluronic acid. These are wound healing ingredients that you're going to want to use, especially if you have an area that's of concern that is healing. You want to protect it from the sun, and once it's finished scabbing over, yeah, you want to put a retinoid on that. If you do have raised or keloid scars, you might want to use a compression bandage on them. And if those scars are really long lasting, they've been there for a while, or they're really starting to bother you and grow, you can get steroid injections from a doctor or derm. But the sun causes scars to heal thickened and darker than normal. And that can be really frustrating for some people and nobody prepared me for that. And the marks that my acne would leave behind after the pimple would disappear terrible. Sunscreens with vitamin C are an absolute must, especially for scars and for skin that is in the healing process. And then retinoids for something that has textural issues, as well as things like hydroquinone or kojic acid or licorice for things that have color or pigmentary issues. And again, don't forget about things like lasers or chemical peels if you do want to go into clinic and get things done professionally. Now, we cannot be having a discussion about the sun if we don't talk about wrinkles. We know that the sun causes fine lines, wrinkles, photo damage, essentially. And for a lot of people, they care more about wrinkles on their skin than they do skin cancer, which for me is sad because I think wrinkles are endearing and beautiful and they're a sign of age, which I associate with wisdom or other endearing properties. But for some people, they do not want the wrinkles. And listen, if you don't want the wrinkles, you don't have to have them. We know that the sun has UVA and UVB rays. You can think of the UVA as the UV aging, again, causing those sunspots or liver spots, those solar lentigos, as well as damaging the collagen and elastin deep in the skin, basically disrupting the structure of our skin deep down. The UVB rays are the Bernie rays. Those are the ones that cause the physical pain. Ouch. These rays can damage the skin and essentially think of your collagen and elastin fibers deep in your skin kind of like a basket weave or kind of like knitting or crocheting or a nice sweatshirt. It has a very defined pattern that is beautiful. If the sun comes in and damages that, the knits and the stitching can start to get stretchy. It can kind of start to loosen up. That means our skin doesn't bounce back as much and especially if you do get a wound or if you do get something that disrupts that, the skin is going to try to heal itself back but it can't always go back into that basket weave and it kind of ends up balling up, which can cause a scar that lifts up in the skin or pulls down on the skin. Now, if you been here before, you know what the answer is. Protecting yourself from the sun or working on things that actually re-stimulate collagen and can get rid of fine lines and wrinkles, specifically hydrators and retinoids. But when it comes to protection, use a sunscreen that's going to be best for you. If you're oily, I love this one. This is the Botanical Face Screen SPF 50. This is also great for acne prone skin. This is a little bit tinted. It's great. It's $16. It used to be eight, but inflation has inflated everything. But another really great option that is fantastic and from Korea is this Centella one. This is specific specifically the High Lucica Water Fit Sun Cream. It's an SPF 50. This is a chemical slash organic blend that goes in completely sheer. Korean Beauty did it right. And yes, this is great to protect you from the sun and the sun causing wrinkles and damage. And this formula also doesn't get stuck in wrinkles. That can be a huge problem, especially if you have fine lines or kind of some deeper areas on the face. If you do use certain sunscreens, they can kind of ball up and pill up and actually make those lines look worse, especially if they have things like mica or kind of like glittery pigments in them. So keep that in mind. But this one is hydrating and it doesn't get stuck in those fine lines and wrinkles. So this is a great one, especially for wrinkled skin. Now, speaking of wrinkled skin, how do we deal with wrinkles that are already there? A lot of people don't think of hydration. Hydration can actually plump up the top layers of the skin, making them look plumper and juicier with things like ceramides or even copper peptides, and that can make fine lines and wrinkles look less apparent. Then deep down, you're gonna wanna use some retinoids. Again, you can get retinol or retinal over the counter, or you can get a prescription strength retinoid like retinoic acid, AKA tretinoin. This one also has dex Panthenol, basically vitamin B5, that's also fantastic, but using sun protection, hydrators, and retinoids to literally rebuild your skin cells from the inside out is going to be your best bet for the fine lines and the wrinkles that happen, I mean, technically on the face, but also on the chest and the neck and the back and the hands and everywhere else that's exposed to the sun and gets wrinkly. Now, baby, we also have to talk about rosacea and rhinophyma. And when a lot of people think about sun damage, they don't realize how it can contribute and actually make things like rosacea worse. Rosacea can flare up due to many different 
things from alcohol to spicy foods to stress, etc. But the sun really does a number on rosacea. And this especially happens in skin tones that are maybe Fitzpatrick type one, two, or three. If you are a Fitzpatrick type one, two, or three, and you thought that you escaped the pigmentary issues that four, five, or six happens, uh-oh, SpaghettiO, sorry to tell you, but Fitzpatrick types one, two, and three are much more prone to rosacea, to redness, and even to rhinophyma. When you look at this person's nose, rhinophyma is not technically caused by sun exposure, but sun exposure in rosacea can absolutely cause this to worsen over time. And literally once rhinophyma gets this intense, it can actually disfigure the nose or other areas of the face. There's actually blood vessels and sebaceous glands in here, and you literally need to kind of like cut it off or use a laser on it, which is a huge dermatologic and skin surgery intervention. So if you have rosacea or if you have subclinical rosacea, preventing it from getting worse by avoiding sun exposure, excessive drinking, and spicy foods can help prevent it from turning into rhinophyma over time. Rosacea can also look like acne, which is why it is so very important to get it diagnosed by a derm because you want to make sure you know if it's acne or if it's pustular rosacea. But one of the best ingredients you can use over the counter or prescription is azelaic acid. There's one from Paula's Choice that I love, which is over the counter. It's like 30, maybe 35 bucks on Amazon or on paulaschoice.com. But you can also get azelaic acid in a prescription. You can get one from your doctor or derm. You can get one in clinic or telehealth or again, mine specifically has azelaic acid as well as other ingredients. So what you get is going to be custom blended to you. Azelaic acid really is a hero ingredient. And if it's something you want, ask your care provider for it, especially if you think it'll be helpful for your skin. If you have rosacea and redness and you're worried about rhinophyma, azelaic acid is great. If you have acne, azelaic acid can help. Even if you have some pigmentary issues, azelaic acid can help. It's a really great option that you should look into. But with rosacea, remember that it's about avoiding those triggers like spicy food and stress, but also wearing that hat, wearing your sunscreen, making sure that you do have sun protection. Now, one thing that is very unusual and a lot of people, including younger me, didn't believe, but that is legit a thing is a sun allergy. Yeah, some people can be allergic to the sun. And that is one thing that your mama or your dad or your doctor didn't tell you about. But yes, sun allergies can really affect the quality of life for certain people, or they can develop over time. One of the medical terms for this is a polymorphous light eruption. And this can appear as little fluid filled blisters that are in areas that were sun exposed or even kind of like large puffy plaques that develop. And the really, really f hard, difficult part about a sun allergy is that it's usually a delayed reaction, meaning you don't just walk into the sun and your skin f explodes. <laughs> It's normally two hours or even a day later that your skin starts to get really red and irritated. And it's specifically in those areas that were in direct sun exposure, such as the cheeks, the forehead, maybe the chest, backs of the hands, or even the backs of the legs. This is so frustrating for people. And it's really hard for people to figure out the cause of it as well. And if they don't have a doctor or a dermatologist like on speed dial or as a telehealth form through like an agency or other online prescription, they're like, what the f is going on? I woke up and this happened. Like, do I have bed bugs? Like, is something disturbing me in my sleep? No, maybe you've got a sun allergy and you actually had sun exposure the day before. Oh, miserable. Obviously, you want to speak to your doctor or your derm about this. You might need an EpiPen depending on how bad the allergy is and if it actually causes anaphylaxis, meaning that your throat swells up and it's hard to breathe. We don't want that. But staying protected from the sun is one of the best things that you can do. And again, this means hats, this means seeking out shade, and this means slathering up in sunscreen. There are a ton of different options. Find one that's affordable for you because just like everybody else should be, someone with a sun allergy especially should be hanging out with SPF, their BFF, every single day. Super Goop actually sells a gallon version of sunscreen. It's legit like a gallon that you pump out, especially if you are prone to polymorphous light eruptions, AKA sun allergies, you should get that. But honestly, like if you love sunscreen and you love super goop, like everyone should get that. It's amazing. Like can more brands make gallon jugs of sunscreen? This is like the 21st century version of the milk cartons that people used to get delivered to their doors with like the milk boy. You know what I'm talking about? This is the sunscreen gallon. Like we have entered a new era. <laughs> if you're actually interested, there's a guy named Edward, Edward Zoe on Instagram. I actually met him in person. It was an amazing experience, but he was sharing with me and he has shared online that he actually has a sun allergy. So if you're interested in following the journey of someone who has this skin condition and how he manages it, I'd highly recommend checking out some of his content. Now, while my mom did buy me a UPF protected swimsuit that made me look like Barney and she slathered me up in sunscreen and hats when I was younger because she was a sunscreen queen, my mom did not tell me about actinic keratoses, but my grandmother
mother did, and some of my teachers actually did when learning about dermatology. But actinic keratoses are something that a lot of people don't speak about, but these little growths on the skin can actually lead to a form of skin cancer, specifically squamous cell carcinoma. Actinic keratoses can kind of look like these crusty little lesions on the skin. They kind of feel rough and patchy. And the way I've described them is kind of like cat litter. They can look kind of gray and like granules of cat litter on the face, and they can kind of feel like them too. Now, actinic keratoses do need to get diagnosed by a doctor or derm, and the best way to deal with them is to freeze them off or cut them off. It's actually really fun to do. But this needs to be seen and diagnosed by a derm, but guess what can help? Over-the-counter things such as sunscreen, and of course, just taking care of your skin with good skincare, good hygiene on a regular basis. My grandmother specifically has many actinic keratoses, and she has Alzheimer's and dementia, so she's kind of nearing the end of her life, and what can I say? She loves sitting out in the sun. <laughs> and it's really like weird for me and my family because we are such sun protective advocates. And now that my grandma is at the end of her life, we're like, you know, of course we're gonna apply sunscreen to her when we see her trying to go outside, but are we really gonna sit there and like try to get her out of the sun? This is something that she enjoys. And even though she's literally getting more of these lesions on her face, she's had skin cancer before, she's gotten it cut out of her face. We want her to be happy. And so it's really weird because we're literally allowing her to just sit out in the sun, be happy, enjoy the time that she has, which is like so weird and so opposite of what I normally do, right? And I would say for anybody who, you know, is not in that situation, it is so important to exercise sun exposure responsibly. But it's kind of an interesting juxtaposition that there are areas in time or areas in our lives where we do want to break all of our rules just for the sake of comfort or enjoying the time that we have left. Because honestly, tomorrow is never promised. Now that being said, something that helps me enjoy life is learning about skincare, understanding ingredients and how they work, and literally looking at doctors, dermatologists, researchers, cutting edge scientists to learn these things. And for me, like I, I hope I'm gonna stick around for a while, so you bet that I'm trying to avoid actinic keratoses. The best way to do that is by using sun protection. And if you notice any of these little granules on your skin or on someone else's skin, point them out to a doctor or a derm. And the reason that actinic keratoses can be so concerning is because they can and often do turn into skin cancer. AKs normally turn into squamous cell carcinoma, but don't forget about melanoma. Don't forget about the ABCDs and even the EFGs of skin cancer and what to look for for moles. That's the main thing that the sun can cause, which is not cosmetic, it's literally health related. You do not want melanoma. You do not want skin cancer. You don't want a flap to be cut out of your forehead so that there's blood flow that gets brought down to your nose as a surgery to help regrow tissue that had to be cut out because of skin cancer. You don't want to go into Mohs surgery and have to have a doctor or a surgeon literally cut out layers of your skin layer by layer for hours while you sit in an office and they look at each one under a microscope slide to make sure that all of the skin cancer has been removed. If you can prevent that, that transcends so far beyond beauty and it's about healthy sun exposure and enjoying the sun responsibly with hats, with shade, with sunscreens, etc. And then taking care of your skin for your beauty, for your comfort, for your health and longevity because your skin is literally a protective barrier that protects you. It keeps the bad stuff out and keeps you the good stuff in. So if you can use ingredients like retinoids that literally help to rebuild your skin cells from the inside out, or using ceramides or hydrators or other ingredients that literally protect your skin, that is a form of self-care that is not selfish at all. And it is literally about hygiene, protection, and yes, there's a benefit of beauty thrown into it. Again, a huge thank you to Agency for working with us on a portion of this video, for helping people have access to doctors and derms online who can not only prescribe some of these active ingredients, but also taking the time to educate people on these things, for making content like this free and possible, and making sure that people have access to the knowledge they need to take care of themselves the best. When I was 16 and had acne, people didn't tell me about the actinic keratoses or the things that could develop later in life if I didn't care for my skin properly. And I wish I had options available like these that I do now. So yes, the best time to start was 10 years ago. The best time to plant a tree was also 10 years ago, but the second best time is now. And in the words of Dr. Alexis Steffens, where you start is where you'll stay. Sunscreen to protect, retinoids to treat, and then cleansers and hydrators and everything in between for your hygiene. When did I become such a lyrical genius? Somebody give me an Emmy, an Oscar. What is the one for music rhyming abilities? <laughs> give me one of those. I will leave all of my recommended sunscreens below as well as here. And again, if you would like to speak with a dermatologist or doctor at agency, or if you would like to get a prescription strength treatment, I'll leave the details to get it for five or six dollars below as well. On top of some little goodies in the description box about these different skin conditions, about how to treat them, medical studies that explain why the sun can cause these things to happen and what you can actually do about it. So always remember to stay hydrated, both orally and topically, or reapply that SPF because you know SPF is your BFF, and always be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.